Welcome to Mission Stories for Kids with Uncle Gordon, where you will hear first-hand accounts of answers to prayer and miracles from God. Oh, by the way, I think adults will like this too. Hi boys and girls, Uncle Gordon here. I have another story to tell you. This one comes from Vanuatu. It used to be called, way back, the New Hebrides. It's quite a bit south of the Solomon Islands and I had the joy every year of going down there and and running training programs for people who are health workers or for people who were young people, youth workers, for families and youth workers and I was heading down to the island of Malakula to run a training program with a lot of young people on how to look after their own youth groups and how to run programs and how to share their faith in God. And so we flew into Malakula and then jumped on the back of an old ute and began to chug our way down to the, down to the bay called Malawa Bay, where this training program was going to be run. As we were travelling, the term Malawa Bay, Malawa Bay kept going over and over in my mind. What do I know? What have I heard about? Where have I heard of Malawa Bay before on Malakula? Anyway, we arrived and we met the local pastor who, who was coordinating all the young people who had come from all around for this training for the next few days. And he said, I'd like to go and show you the grave where, where Norman Wiles is buried. And I thought, Norman Wiles? Wow. And so as I walked with this pastor, Pastor Jonathan Dick, we began to walk towards the gravesite. And as I stood beside this little place that was marked as where Norman Wiles had died, the very first missionary to that part of the island. And he had died without anybody having yet made commitments. He had died because of all the mosquitoes that had bitten him, had caused sickness to grow in his body and and eventually had killed him. And so his poor wife was left alone and she had to find a ship to get back home and, uh, and they had to find a new missionary. The new missionary and his young wife were my grandfather and grandmother. Pastor William Douglas Smith. And as I heard Jonathan talking about the story of of Norman Wiles, where nobody had made a commitment, but some of them were learning about God through him, but it wasn't till the next pastor came that somebody began to make commitments to God. And I said, Pastor Jonathan, my grandfather came here when Norman Wiles died. And he turned around and looked at me and said, What? You're my cousin brother. You're my cousin brother. And I said, how? What happened? How, 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 do you, how do you call me that? And he said, well, the story goes like this. When your grandma and grandpa were living here, my father, my grandfather, lived up in the mountains. And my grandfather was a wild man. They were called the Big Nambus. And my grandfather was a very wild, angry person. And he was nothing to do with Christianity. He was against Christianity. And he had a a little baby. His first wife had a little baby and he had a number of wives. And he said to this lady, my mother or my father's mother, he said, look after the baby while I go hunting. And uh, she said, yeah, okay. But she was sick with malaria. She'd been bitten by mosquitoes. And so she fell into a deep sleep then and forgot about the pig that was outside that she was supposed to care for. And uh, when the hubby came home from his hunting, the pig had gone walkabout, had gone wandering off somewhere. And this man was just so angry, he just picked up his club, his fighting club, and hit her over the head. That one big hit was enough to kill his wife. And then he thought, oh, I've killed her. I've got a little baby. What do I do with the baby? And so that little baby he offered to a number of the other women in the village where he lived. And none of them would take, no, that's your baby. You look after your baby. You've killed the wife. Your responsibility. Nobody would take the baby. So eventually somebody said, what about taking it down to the missionary who lives down the hill a little bit? And he said, oh, I don't want my child to grow up with a missionary family. And uh, they said, well, that's no other choice. Well, the baby dies. So he eventually carried that little baby down the hill to my grandparents and offered the baby to them and said, this child can be yours. Can you please bring him up? Because I don't have any way of bringing him up. Can you bring him up? My father was just a toddler in that home at the time. 
He was growing up there, and all of a sudden he had a little baby brother. And so that person whose name was Sam Dick, that person grew up in my grandparents' home with my dad, and they were brothers, the two of them, a white one and a black one, two who were real brothers because they grew up in the same family. And so Jonathan now was saying, that Sam Dick who was the first person to become a missionary for God from these local people in Vanuatu, he is the one who grew up with your dad as his brother. And so we are the sons of those men, so we are therefore cousin brothers. And I thought, how wonderful to have a cousin brother over in Vanuatu who was also sharing his love for God all around the place and could work with me during that next week. Isn't it wonderful how God does intervene and how that God was able to make inroads into those people's lives through the influence of of my grandparents? And I thought, what a privilege to be able to live for God every day. And children, it's your privilege to live for God every day. You mightn't have to be a minister or a doctor or a nurse, but whatever you do, As you're growing up, if you can give your life to God, He can use you to to draw other people to know and appreciate God, whatever the circumstances. God bless you, young ones. You've been listening to Mission Stories for Kids with Uncle Gordon, a production of 3ABN Australia Radio.